Okay, so let's take the details of the rest of the day. We're going to change out. We shot Dream Lake. Now, what can we do with the rest of our time? We hiked all the way up there. It's uh, mid-September, late September, so the elk are rutting. You know, it's it's not very much farther of a walk to get up to Lake Hayaha, and uh, it's only another mile to get up there. What happens if we hike over to the edge of Lake Hayaha? Now, we shot there at sunrise, and we're going to shoot, so time of the day is going to move through, you know, we probably get up there somewhere around, you know, maybe about 8, 8 45, 9 o'clock. Well, here's something really neat. We look at our line, there's our yellow line, that's where the sun's going to be. If you wanted to look out across the horizon, it's going to be 20 degrees above the horizon. And we look out, there's the sun coming right across Lake Hayaha. We hold down the shift key, backside of Hallett's Peak is going to be lit up really well. Now, is that a perfect shot? Not necessarily, but it might be a good black and white opportunity. And we can look. Now, here's where it gets really intriguing. Oops, zoomed in a little bit too far. We've got some mountains way out here. We've got, um, let's see, what is this? We're looking at uh, one of the uh, one of the, the glacial domes and before the mountain. So we put our little gray guy here. If we're on the uh, the details, we click back from from uh, details to multi-day. Here's our details panel. We that we get this little gray guy and we put that out there. That tells us is the sun going to be blocked by that mountain. If you've never been there, you really don't know. Well, knowing the, the terrain, well, there's really not a whole lot that's going to block the sun at that time of day uh, coming up to Lake Hayaha. But if you didn't know, here's the way to verify. The sun at that time of day is going to be 20 degrees above the horizon. This mountain is roughly about half a degree, a little bit more than half a degree above your location here at Lake Hayaha. So the only time of the day that you can't shoot it is when the sun is half a degree above the horizon. So you can shoot that pretty much right at sunrise. No worry about it being blocked. Now take that from another standpoint. What if you want to get up here to Lake Hayaha and you want to shoot, you want to climb around the boulders and you get over here. You want to shoot it right in the middle of the day, late afternoon. There's the sun coming up over and coming over Mount Otis there. Let's move our little uh, gray line over here. We're going to put it there. Well, from this point, this the mountain is 24 degrees above our location at the shore of Lake Hayaha. Well, the sun at that moment, there at uh, we're in military time here, so we go at 140 in the afternoon. Uh, the sun is still going to be 20 plus degrees above the mountain. So you can shoot that. We can get some good shots potentially, especially if we want to go black and white. But what happens if we want to shoot Lake Hayaha in the evening time? We want to forgo all those darn elk, and we want to shoot when does Lake Hayaha lose the light? Well, here's a great question, and this program really lets you pan out. You know, we look at it, so if it's about 4.50 in the afternoon, these are the highest point on the peak, and it's, let's see, let's take a look. The sun's 22 degrees above the horizon. The mountain is 13 degrees above where you're standing. So once those match, the light's going to disappear. So if we go through the day, let's go right about here, get to about 6.05 in the evening. That's about the highest point, we're going to guess roughly. 17 degrees above you, the sun's only 9 degrees above the horizon. It's shaded and dark in the Lake Hayaha Basin of Chaos Canyon and down through here you're too late. So when do you get there? You could shoot and we can go, let's back it up, let's back up the sun so that we get about 17, 18 degrees. Now right here at uh, 515 the sun's still above where you are. This makes this program awesome. So let's take it and apply it to wildlife photography. There's times a day that we want to get direct light on our subjects and if you know a little bit about where you can go it's going to tell us a lot about what we can shoot. If we shoot, we went up to Dream Lake to shoot sunrise and we want to shoot elk in the afternoon. Well, knowing a little bit about the elk, they often hang out here in Moraine Park. Moraine Park has had the highest concentration of elk ever recorded on Earth. So if you can't find elk during the rut in Moraine Park, there's something wrong. But here's where this program gets really handy. I have a road right here. 
If you know much about the Rocky Mountain National Park, during the rut season, after 5 o'clock, the meadows are closed. You can't get out here. So you can't be standing right out here in the middle. You hold down your shift key. Any elk standing in, in that nice thin orange line would be lit up, lit up very nicely. But, well, we're going to be out here right at the curve. There's tons of folks. You'll be the you'll probably be one of 50,000 people watching elk that day. But if there's any elk in this region right here, they're going to be lit up really well. If you're looking over here, the elk aren't going to be lit up too well during the day unless, well, now we have something to deal with. Remember, we're in the mountains. It's 5.15 in the evening. We're getting towards fall. The sun is coming over these mountains. So remember the same thing we were doing. When does the light leave Moraine Park? So we got to go find the highest peak the sun's going to cross. So at this very point, bring it back out. There's Moraine Park. There's where we're standing. The sun's 18 degrees above the horizon. That mountain's 7 degrees. So at 515, there's still light in the meadow. The question then is when does the light leave the meadow? When do you call it at night? So if we get out to about 610, all right, the, the sun's passing the mountain here, and uh, we're all the way out to one of these peaks, more than likely. we got 12,000 feet all the way out here. Well, that mountain is only five degrees above you. The sun's eight degrees, so it's still going to be able to shine just a little bit. Let the sun come down just a little bit more, however, and we're running into issues. The light in this meadow is going to get dark. If we use the arrow key here, we can find out. All right, the sun's going to cross that point. Somewhere about 610, 615, the light in the meadow is going to fade. So that's the time to bump up your ISOs, but also to look around. This is a great tool, and what I love about it, we just scroll around here. These lines, our line, our yellow line there, is going to turn orange in the middle of the day. That's where the sun is pointing. So our shadows, if you hold the shift line, everything opposite of your point of the sun, that is where the shadows are going to be. So you know where you want to be, what you want to shoot. Awesome program. We can go through the time. We can change the date. Any time into the future, any time in the past, you wanted to see what was the light like. We can go through. We can get all the details of the twilight. When is the twilight gonna gonna be a civil twilight when you can first see things? All types of great details on this system. You can change your location. You can save them. Plan out your trip. I highly recommend downloading this program. If you search for this right there, TPE, you're going to get yourself a great program. And we all should thank Stephen for producing such a great system and making life easy for all of us photographers. Thanks a lot.